Warning. You've reached On The Box with Ray Comfort and are now in a biblical truth zone. Place all questions about theology, current events, and evangelism on the box where they'll be weighed against the truth of God's Word. Ready your hearts and minds. You're about to be inspired and equipped to fulfill the Great Commission. Programming to engage in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to our Wednesday edition of On the Box with Ray Comfort. It's great to have all of our theist, atheist friends, along with friends and enemies and everyone else on earth. Great to have you with us. This is Ray Comfort. I am Emil Zwayne, the humble Arab, and we have Mark Spence at the Dean's Desk. Hey there, Mark. Hey there, Emil Zwayne. Emil Zwayne. Why did my parents name me Emil Zwayne? They ran out of names. I know. Maybe so my initials could be easy. (laughs) That would be it. Good to have you with us today. We are excited to talk about a couple of hot topics. We're going to talk about the National Atheist Party conference or convention being canceled, and we're going to talk about how Mark Spence bumped into Will Smith. So let's take the first oh, no, item. That was John Smith, his old buddy from school. Oh, oh Will's <laughs> buddy, John. John, Will, it's all the same. Yeah, he is. But let's open up, Ray, with the, uh, the National Atheist Party uh, convention being canceled. Uh, I was really sad to see this. Are I, you? I Did actually, it break your heart? No, I, I, uh, I actually um, wrote them a letter. I got the top guy's name. A console. Consolation letter? Or? No, yeah, yeah, it was consolation letter, and I said, I'm sorry to see that you had to cancel out. We had to cancel one of our conferences, right. a sign of the Times, Economic Times. I said, if there's any way I could help, I'd love to be a speaker uh, any time for them, and um, I'd speak without an honorarium to save them finances. Did they respond? Yes, he did. He was what very he nice. He sh- shut up. No, he didn't. <laughs> 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 no, he didn't. He was actually oh. very polite, and he said they're having a conference out here in March, and he said, see you then. Right. I don't know what that means. But I would love to, I mean, they could invite every atheist around the country to come and bring a banana to throw at me while uh, I'm speaking. I wouldn't mind. I think, <laughs> I think a, you couldn't. know what? I bet you they would pack that place I out. I think they would. <laughs> yeah. So uh, banana rake over. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, let, let me read the article here. It says, Troy Boyle, the party's president, announced on its, web, uh, announced on its website that it won't be holding NAPCON. NAPCON? Yeah, it's probably an acronym. For napkin or something. <laughs> Nap- <laughs> NAPCON 212. NAPCON had to fold up. Right. NAPCON 212 in Boston in October because it would bankrupt the group. The convention was supposed to consist of several speakers and musical acts over two days, as well as giving away free prizes to fellow atheists. Boyle blames a lack of donations and sponsors, along with several prominent people backing out of the convention. Now, Ray, this is, this is actually a political party. I mean, it's not just you know, a, a kind of an atheist meeting or, or an atheist organization, but this is, a, they want to become a full-fledged political but party. But anyone can do that, can't they? I've heard they can try, but yes. I mean, do you, Mark, what do you think? Do you think this has uh, potential or hope? I mean, can you ever see this in our country, an actual atheist political party? Yeah, you know, I, I actually can with uh, the direction that our country is heading. Unless God intervenes, then absolutely. But, you know, just as you're going through this, I think of the kindness of God to allow them to assemble right. when he doesn't need to. He can rain down upon their parade, and it seems that uh, he did here. I mean, it rains on the just and the unjust alike. We've seen uh, Christian conferences canceled because of uh, lack of attendance or sign-ups. Uh, how much more atheist conferences? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, if people are going to meet together and talk about about the non-existence of God, I, they, they can do whatever they want to do because right. they are accountable to no one, so they think. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> if there was no God, there'd be no atheists. Right. Yeah. That's a really good so point. Atheists exist because God exists. But Ray, okay, obviously you deal a lot with atheism. You deal a lot with atheists personally. Uh, and we've definitely seen uh, an uptick in atheist activity in the country. I mean, they're putting up billboards during Christmas. Uh, mm-hmm. They're, uh, you know, they're trying to, to flood the market with books. Obviously, you, you guys all have heard about The Golden Compass, which is a movie that had atheist uh, elements to it. Mm. But, you know, you see an influence and an impact on the culture. In fact, I was just... I heard yesterday uh, the Democratic Party took the, the name God out of their, their yes. platform. yeah. So, wh- I mean, what's happening? Are, are they making headway? What's, what's going on? I mean, what's, what's the uh, catalyst behind what's going on? Atheism gives license to a whole new realm of uh, sin. Right. You know, uh, conscience-free sin, guilt-free sin. If you can get rid of God and moral responsibility in any way, then it opens the door to free sex and pornography. Nothing's right, nothing's wrong, adultery's not wrong. If it doesn't hurt anybody, you can yeah. do anything you want. 
uh, if, if God doesn't exist. And, and that's why it's so attractive, the sinful generation. So it's sort of like a legitimate um, platform for people to do what they want. It becomes a sort of exhilarating element. Like, wait a minute, we now have a reason why we can do what we do. Mm-hmm. And Christianity gives them a reason to get out of bed in the morning. Right. You know, because if you're an atheist, you've got no reason to exist. You've got no reason to be here. You've got nothing to look forward to. So you've got to do something, and you pick on Christians. Right. And, and that's and what blows my mind. I see you know, our friend Bruce out there with you, I see them, you know, again, expending money to put up billboards to, you know, do all these things. And saying, we are good people. We right. are good people. Oh, man. It's <laughs> crazy. But, Ray, um, some people have the, the uh, misconception that you hate atheists. You're an enemy of atheists. But you have a lot of atheist friends. Got a lot of atheist friends. Went to dinner with uh, 40 atheists. Mark came along, didn't you, Mark? I did. We had well, a good where time. Where did we go? International House of... Prayer? Prayer. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Pancakes. I hop. That's, That's right. right. How was that, Mark? I you mean, know, it, that it was really like? good. I, I think that it wasn't until we ran out of battery that it got really good. Uh, but we actually created a standalone DVD, which we're actually, funny you bring it up, we're going to be making it available for free downloads uh, here at livingwaters.com. But it was, a, it was a really hoot. There were 40 atheists that were there or so, and uh, Ray ended up buying them all dinner. And it was very cordial. I mean, it was just like a university setting where, as a professor, I just kind of sat there, and then one atheist after another atheist began to ask Ray and myself question after question. Right. And in an evidential way, it wasn't accusational. I mean, I didn't even need to get into any sort of a pre up mentality because they weren't challenging uh, our faiths. They were simply asking questions. Yeah. So it was really actually a breath of fresh air as we uh, sat there with them all for I don't know how long it was, maybe an hour and a half or so. Right. Yeah, and then we all lined up for photos all together. <laughs> it was surreal. No, I, but I love it. I mean, even even Thunderfoot, that many of you may be familiar with, who's more of an antagonistic. I mean, uh, antagonist, who's you know, he's pretty intense when it comes to theists and Christians in particular. But I mean, you really struck it off. You, you hit it off with he him. He came back and twice. He came back and he's polite he took towards my us. Watch. I gave him my watch and then he he auctioned it. <laughs> no, he didn't. He did. Did he, did he really? Yeah, just check it out on there because a little. There's a little YouTube clip where he's right. watching my watch. Yeah. It's the highest bidder. Well, that's great. So for you atheists who are watching us today, listen, uh, we don't have any animosity towards you. In fact, we love you. We care about you. And, um, love you know, to take you to lunch. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, Ray will pay for it all. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Ray will pay, pray, you meant pray, to say. Yes. Pray, yes. You pay, pray. Ray will pray. Uh, all right. Evidence Bible quote of the day. If the giving of the law, while it was yet unbroken, was attended with such a display of awe-inspiring power, what will that day be when the Lord shall, with flaming fire, take vengeance on those who have willfully broken that law? Can you guess who that is, Ray? Charles Spurgeon, right. who I like to say is quotable even as he talks in his sleep. Oh. You know, his wife should have been there with the tape recorded to hear what he mumbled right. as he was asleep because everything he said is so profound. And that for did happen once, by the way, actually. He, he couldn't get a sermon together. He was frustrated all day. He went to bed. He preached it in his sleep. His wife took the notes, and he oh, preached really? it the next morning. Yeah, incredible. <laughs> yeah. So, but, so but, I just snore, but he used to preach. Oh, yeah. Anointed <laughs> snoring, though, right? I'm sure there's an interpretation <laughs> of your snoring somehow. This is it's a wonderful quote. He's saying if, if God in peace gave his law, and it was terrifying to Israel, I mean, God came with a smile on his face to give the commandments to Israel. So terrible was the sight. The Bible says Moses was exceedingly fearful. Israel said, don't let God speak, lest we die. Just the sound of his voice, they thought they were going to die. Right. And that's when he came in peace. So how great will be the, the wrath and the terror when he comes in flaming fire to rebuke those who have deliberately transgressed the law? Yeah, I like the point that he makes. If when the law was given and it had not yet even been broken, there was such a sight of, of, of terror and intensity, wow. how about when his law is willfully violated by yeah. man? What do you think about that, Mark? Well, you know, it actually reminds me of uh, my devotions uh, this morning from uh, Jeremiah chapter 8, where you had these people who wanted anything and everything but God. And God said, all right, you want this land? You want to inherit this land? Well, your bones are going to be scattered all throughout the land. A bone here, a bone there, and you get to inherit the land, but really you don't get to enjoy it as much as you wanted. And then he gives out the plea, you know, to come, to come back to him. And he mentions the law. And Ray and I are actually both in uh, Jeremiah uh, right now. He's a little bit ahead of me, so he's able to find out what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm, I'm catching up. Right. I'm on chapter 16, and it's awesome. It wow. really is. That's, yeah, that's it's great. so applicable 
to our nation at this present time, a nation that has forsaken God's law and got into idolatry and its own conception of God, mm. which gives license to all sorts of immorality when you, when you choose a God that has no moral dictate. Wow. You know, this morning uh, I, was, I was watching a YouTube clip that someone sent me the link for with uh, Ronald Reagan. Uh, just, just, you know, one speech after the other where he's talking about, you know, God and the fear of God. And again, I'm, I'm not always enamored by politicians. I know that they, they speak to what's prevalent in the culture and stuff. Mm -hmm. But whatever the case, man, how much things have changed oh, yeah. from where we were as a nation, where presidents would talk about, you know, I mean, and, and Reagan saying, look, the First Amendment was not to protect uh, the government from Christianity or religion. It was to protect, you know, the, the, the community of faith from the government. The from intrusion, the intrusion Absolutely. of the government. Yeah. And how things have changed, you know, where we're at as a nation. But again, that's, that's uh, indicative of a nation that is forsaken. And God. when the enemy comes in like a flood, which is what we're seeing, then we have to promise the Lord to raise a standard right. against him. Yeah. Remember to write to us with your questions. Uh, we are, as we said yesterday, giving out uh, a prize for the question that we select on Friday. And uh, you can email us to onthebox.livingwaters.com. Remember to check us out uh, at our blog on onthebox.us and look us up on Facebook and Twitter. And we're happy today to have a guest with us in the studio, our friend Dan Burleson from Newport, California. Great to have you with us. Thank Good you for to have a us. live audience. Right. <laughs> An audience of one. Great. All right. Now we are going to go to a special segment that we call the Shameless Plug with Mark Spence. Mark, can you please shamelessly plug something for us? Yeah, you know, I'm actually uh, amazed continually at uh, the, the ingenuity that Ray has in creating uh, different gospel tracks. Different uh, gospel? Different gospel <laughs> tracks. Good job, Ray. I guess we tend to hear what we want to hear. No, it's different gospel tracks. You know, those little pieces of paper that we hand out everywhere we go. Right. Well, Ray came out with uh, the survey intelligence uh, test. It's a uh, pad of gospel tracks all attached onto uh, one binding there. And you go up to somebody and you say, hey, would you like to take a quick uh, survey? And you can l let them know from the beginning if you want that it's a survey dealing with uh, spirituality. And you just kind of get into it. Hey, how many of each animal did Moses take into the ark? Uh, what is the name of the raised print that deaf people used? And then it slowly but surely begins to bring in the law. And down towards the end, it says, hey, does God care about right and wrong? Is there a God? Yes or no. Mm -hmm. Does God care about right and wrong? Are God's standards the same as ours? And so you just check off the yeses and the noes. And then on the back is the gospel. And you can... Um, engage in conversation with them right, right at that point if you want, or you can just simply grab a hold of the little pad, rip it off, and you can hand it to them. And now there's, uh, I think, 99 more to go uh, to uh, when, when you go to share your faith. But it's a great, great tool on uh, sharing your faith. Right. Or you can make a paper airplane and throw it at them. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. cool. Paper Mark's job track. this afternoon is to stick that one track back on. And All right, Mark. Just Figure it <laughs> out, Mark. No, but, you know, surveys and questionnaires I found are great tools. Oh, you went. How many houses did you go to? Uh, uh, in our neighborhood, I, a team and myself, uh, in our general area in our city, we did about 1,000 homes. Wow. Uh, we went to Catalina Island and took a team there and went, went door to door. But, you know, even out on the streets, the thing I like about a questionnaire as a survey is it gives you a legitimate reason to approach another individual. Mm -hmm. I mean, nowadays you walk up to someone and say, hi, how you doing? And mm -hmm. they're immediately looking at you with suspicion. Right. But you walk up to someone, hey, how you doing? Right here today doing a real quick questionnaire. You got a minute? And I found 80, 90% of the people I approach like that, you wow. know, we'll do it. And That's then wonderful. it opens a door. It's kind of like the key that unlocks the door, and then you go in and you share the gospel. Wonderful. So it's exciting. All right, we are now going to transition to the segment where we talk about Mark Spence bumping in to Will Smith. Mark, I've heard you share this story, and uh, it's a good one. I think you made it up, but it's okay. Go ahead, Mark. Tell us a little bit about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've attended a lot of uh, sporting events over the course of my life. You know, living in L.A., there's a mecca of uh, sporting events that take place. Been to tons of Laker games, uh, hockey games, uh, baseball games. You have uh, both the Dodgers and the Angels. Uh, and we used to have the Rams. Uh, it was the Los Angeles Rams. But I went to a lot of Laker games, like I said. We, at the time, uh, before I became a Christian, we would uh, start off at the very top of the tier, and then we would make our way all the way down, and we would have it be part of our little uh, MO there to see how close we could uh, get to the very front row without getting caught 
Yes, this was before I became a Christian. Oh, okay, I thought you said you did that as a Christian. No, okay. before I became a Christian. Okay, well, I did it a couple <laughs> times right when ah, I became a Christian. Confession day <laughs> on, on the Okay, box. so this was one of those times when I had uh, made my way uh, down through this uh, somewhat secret corridor. I mean, you know, they check your tickets, but the way I used to do it was I would purchase a bunch of food and get there early. So mm -hmm. when they ask for your ticket, you just kind of walk with authority right past security. Say, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, come in through, please. I don't want to miss any more of the game that I have to, you know, and you just kind of make your way and people just get out of your way. So when right. you get to the front, they say ticket and you're all, are you serious? My hands are, <laughs> put next time, catch me next time, Stand Jim. You're a weasel. I was, <laughs> I was a weasel. <laughs> Oh boy. So this was one of the times and I had, uh, I don't remember what I had inside my hand, but I do remember making my way uh, down through this corridor and I had uh, turned around and I bumped into Will Smith, and it was the Fresh Prince uh, at the time, so he had his so hair. So which one is you, the Amaka? Uh, I'm the one on the left laughing. <laughs> no, so, I, so I had actually, I bumped into him, and I bumped into him pretty hard to where he had uh, lost his footing, and uh, he, he had stumbled. So I, I looked over at him, and I went, oh, I go, hey, you know, it, it's the Fresh Prince of uh, Bel Air. You know, he had his hair, you know, when it was kind of uh, all peaked up. Right. And he got up. And, I, you know, I'm new in my faith. I didn't even hear of gospel tracts at the time, but I, I did know that I needed to share my faith. And I remember looking over at him, and this is what I shared with him. Nothing, actually <laughs> less than that. You know what a, a rimless zero looks like? A rimless means there's nothing there. That's what I shared with him. I shared with him wow. nothing, a rimless zero. And I remember praying a while back, uh, right after that time, God, please open up a door where I can share with Will Smith once again. Now, Will Smith is the one who made this quote. He said, uh, I think he said 90% of the principles found inside the Bible are exact to the tenets of Scientology. Hmm. Now, he was raised Baptist, and I don't know what Bible he was reading, but obviously that is not the case. Right. The tenets of Christianity are not the same as the, uh, the tenets to Scientology. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if he's a Scientologist to this day. I don't know what he believes, what he adheres to. And I know that he does live local. He lives in L.A. Uh, Someone He has a, a little boy that uh, plays football at a uh, local high school. Right. But I had a chance, <laughs> less than a month after uh, bumping into him, after I prayed that prayer, God, I, I want to bump into Will Smith again. That I bumped into him again. I bumped into him again at another Laker game. I remember this Laker game. We had uh, worked our way down uh, towards the front here. Now, I'm very unsanctified, right? I'm moving down, stealing these seats at these Laker games. So you weren't a Christian here either? Uh, no, I am a Christian here, Ray, but I'm very <laughs> unsanctified. Thank right. you. I wouldn't do it to this day, but I did it then. I remember we were at the very front seat. We had the two, two very front seats, uh, Jack Nicholson way on the other side, but we were there. Nobody in front of us. And I remember this guy coming over to me and he was looking at his, uh, his ticket and he looks down at me and he looks at his ticket and he looks down at me like you're sitting in my seat. Well, I didn't get eye contact with him. I just kind of uh, nonchalantly stood up and walked away. And during that time, I had bumped into Will Smith again. <laughs> and I remember uh, him thinking, uh, you know, are you stalking me? Right. You know, I made the whole <laughs> comment, are you stalking me? He gave uh, it a glance. He gave it a laugh, a smile. And uh, I didn't share anything with him once again. Wow. And I, but I remember looking over at my friend. Uh, ready to tell him the story, this exciting story of bumping into Will Smith, and he was out on the center court of the basketball court. Your friend? My friend at the Laker game. He's standing there, and he's wearing this <laughs> T-shirt that says AT&T <laughs> halftime shot. Uh, and I go, Chris, what are you doing? Wow. And, and he goes, Mark, they, they picked me to shoot the <laughs> halftime shot. You know, I can win a car. <laughs> I went, Chris, take off that shirt. Give that thing to me, man. He goes, well, bare minimum, you know, I can win something small. And I went, Chris, everybody knows you can't shoot, man. Please give me this. Give me this opportunity. And he went and he was airballing it left and right. right. And he never won a car. And I never won the conversation with Will because there wasn't one. Wow. So I, pray, I prayed again and I said, God, <laughs> please. You <laughs> did not. I did. I go, God, please uh, allow me to share with Will Smith. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to drop the ball on this. And I believe that failure is not. Um, messing up in the conversation. It's not maybe getting somewhere. I think failure in evangelism is just failing to share. Right. When you fail to share, you failed in your evangelism because results ultimately belong to God. Well, I failed in my evangelism today, that day because I didn't share. 
And I said, God, open up a door where I can show it this guy, perhaps a third time, now for the first time. Oh, would you know it? Last night, yeah. down. Okay, nothing happened. <laughs> okay, yeah, there, there was nothing. <laughs> you know, Mark, maybe the Lord, maybe, <laughs> maybe the Lord spared you some serious humiliation and really blown your witness. What if Will Smith said, "Hey, where are you sitting, man? I'd love to come sit next to you." <laughs> right? oh, Can you uh, imagine? No, but you know, I think that that I think that's encouraging to people. Uh, in that, obviously, Mark, you've been preaching the gospel for a long time, and uh, I'm sure that's not. Uh, the first time where you've passed up an opportunity. I know I have. I know, Ray, you have. Have you, Ray? No, I don't <laughs> think Ray has. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we, we've all, we've all uh, had those times. But you know what? You've got to get up. You've got to be encouraged. You've got to keep moving forward. And speaking of that, um, did you know Will Smith gave a huge financial gift to Living Waters You know years what? Ago. I'm glad you remember that because I was going to share that. Yeah, too. Really? Oh, yeah, funny. I was quite delighted. It wasn't just 10, 20,000. I think it was a, a Big, yeah, big financial a gift. Huge and, gift to Living and Water. And a whole lot of atheists jumped on my blog and says, you dirty rat, he's giving you money, but it was a Living Waters church. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do right. with our ministry. It would have been very nice for Will Smith oh, to give us. Man. But uh, no, yeah, was guys, it wasn't waters. us. It was some other ministry on over in Burbank. Right. But next week, if uh, Alan will remember, we'll share how uh, I bumped into Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ah, oh, that's right. Uh, ten years ago. Santa Monica. In Santa Monica. First so street. we'll share that next week. It was a very interesting time. Yeah. But, you know, we, we want to we hit something that, that is often asked of us. In fact, here's a question. I hear many very encouraging stories on the show and on the way the master on TV. Does it always go great for you guys? Do things ever go bad when you're out witnessing? If so, could you share a story or two? And we actually produced an episode called When Things Go Wrong. And we did it deliberately because things do go wrong. We don't want people to get the, the idea or the thought that every time we speak to people, things go perfectly right. well. Right, absolutely. Uh, because sometimes that can disillusion people into thinking that success in evangelism is when things go well. And like Mark was saying, true success is actually doing it. You, you, the only time you fail in evangelism is when you don't do it. Hey, just that a thought. Stephen was successful. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. And b people saw the intensity of that. And, you know, <clears throat> I thought of that, Ray, because you're dealing with a guy like that. It's intense. Um, y y you know, even just hearing the profane stuff coming mm -hmm. out of his mouth, it almost gives you that sense like, I want to get out of here. But you pressed on with Oh, him. you're talking about this day. I was talking about Stephen in the Bible. Oh, it was okay. stoned to death. <laughs> Got it. I'm sorry. Huh. Stephen in the Bible, the Acts chapter, Bishop was stoned to death. Right. I think it was six or seven. Yes. But uh, yeah, seven. so that's successful because God allowed that to happen, but he, he, he preached the truth. Right. And Steve, so. Steve from 180 has become so famous. I want to hear the name Steve. It's <laughs> got to be him. He superseded Steve, Stephen But in the that's a good example, though, of, so, of something that you could have given up in the midst of. Yes. But you pressed on. And at the end, a lot of people have been surprising. Wow, look at how, how much he softened up. I was not going to let that guy go. Right. I just I was so delighted to so see him. That was great. But you know what? Things do go wrong. And what we do is we press on. Uh, we want to play you a couple of clips of things that did go wrong. At least they appeared to have gone wrong um, in our encounters. So we'll go ahead and reel, reel the, roll the first tape of Ray in Israel while we were preaching the gospel in Jerusalem on Ben Yehuda Street. Let's roll that, guys. <laughs> Oh, there's Dan. You are a foreign work for us. You are a Abodazara. That's what you are. That's what you are. I don't want your place. I don't need your place. I guess everything you are present, everything you say. You come in here, you come to poor people, you try to make Jewish Christians. That's what you're trying to do. God will pass over your sins if you trust in Jesus Christ. That guy's a spitting image of someone I know, I'm sure. Oh, man. Five spits. Now, that was me behind the camera, for those of you that don't know. And, you know, right when, right when, Ray started to use the name of Jesus. Because before that, the crowd was fine. You mm -hmm. were doing some trivia. You had a lady who was interpreting for you. That's right. But the second Ray said, Jesus said, if you look at a woman to lust after her, the, na the second they heard the name of Jesus, everything just blew up. Oh, hell. Broke right. Loose. And when they looked over at me uh, and they saw me filming, uh, they, they started chasing me around trying to get the camera. Maybe because they wanted to beat you up or maybe they didn't want us to turn it in and show what they were doing. And we're passing it behind our backs, you know, trying to get away. But the thing that blew my mind, and again, this speaks to how you need to continue to press on, uh, even though I wouldn't necessarily advise what Ray did, but Ray <laughs> jumps off the box, 
And it's like nothing happened. Yeah, right. Do you want one of these? Do you want one of these? Yeah, right. Yeah. And I look over at Ray. I'm like, Ray, we're going to die. Let's get out of here. And I'm the Arab in the midst of all these Jews, right? And, uh, but, but, you know, Ray continued to press on. And, hey, we continued to preach the gospel after that. Now, I had an interesting experience when we were in New Zealand preaching this the gospel. This is one of my hecklers, Mr. God. How long is the clip? Fairly short. Right. One of my hecklers, they heckled me for about four years. His name was Bill the Buddhist, who became Bill the homosexual who became Bill the transsexual, and uh, interesting to see what happened. Right. Roll it. Billy, Christ can set you free. Hey. Listen, Yink. Christ can... Look, Yink. Hey. Let me tell you. Hey. Don't come to my country telling me we've got rights in this country, okay? Boy, you know, he didn't know what he is. His plan with fire. You were from the Crips. You could have eaten him oh, alive. Oh, man. You know, honestly, to this day, I look back on that, and I, I give God thanks for, the, for giving me self-control. Because, I mean, not like I'm a big bad guy, but, but, but reflex from mm -hmm. my past would have been to, to launch at him. And uh, yet I was able to, after that, continue to share the what gospel. What was the word you said as he got around the throat? Oh. <laughs> In that fact, I've become it. famous for that. Sometimes people look at me and go, you look familiar. And I go, oh, you're that guy. <laughs> so who was doing the filming? Uh, Let's cross over to talk to the cameraman for a minute. Oh, yeah. oh that would have been me. The I remember filming and thinking, do I help easy at this point and right. put the camera down or do Thank I keep you, filming? Thank you, my faithful friend, Mark. I've got to keep filming. All right. That's what's important. Get me getting killed, you know? No big deal. Uh, but, but what an experience that was. And even after that, I was able to look Billy in the eye and just tell him that I cared for him, that I loved him, yeah. and, uh, and, and continued to share the gospel uh, with them. So guys, press on. Don't give up. Uh, continue to preach. Look at what the, the apostles and the early believers went through in the Bible. Uh, they were stoned. I mean, you think of what Paul the Apostle said. He was shipwrecked, you know? You know, I just got to say here, if, if someone's going to stone you, as Jesus said, if, a pers if you're persecuted in one city, flee to the next. So right. don't wait around <laughs> to be stoned or choked to death. You can run. It's okay. It's yeah. legitimate. Paul we don't got lowered in a basket. He got let down by his friends. Right. We don't look for persecution, but uh, uh, we, when it comes, we can continue to press on and go and preach the gospel. So do that today. Get out, preach the gospel, and make Jesus known. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless. For questions about On the Box with Ray Comfort or to submit questions for future shows, please email onthebox at livingwaters.com. That's onthebox at livingwaters.com. On the Box with Ray Comfort is an outreach of Living Waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll-free 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel. Thank <laughs> you.